think it's fascinating and horrifying in equal measure to see quite how systematically the Nazis stripped away everything from the Jews that made them human, really. And what I hadn't realised that the Nazis were so keen to force the Jews to emigrate. I didn't realise that was part of their master plan. Of course, the Oppenheimers in '33 left Germany. They did emigrate. They had to leave everything behind, including their painting. A painting Bendel has news of back at base. Well, Anne Weber from the Commission for Looted Art in Europe has been in touch, and she and her team have made the most fantastic discovery. Our picture was listed by the Nazis in 1934 as a work of national treasure, which meant that it couldn't be exported from the country. And Anne and her team have signed, sent us a copy of the list from a few years later in 1938. Here it is. It's the second picture down, artist Rembrandt on the left, and then the business Sinus Partus in Fantasia, in fact, means basically portrait of the father in fancy dress. And you can see all these pictures are by Rembrandt and Grimm. And this is extraordinary. I'm just trying to keep up with what this means. They, they thought it was a Rembrandt. Indeed, yes. And therefore, as a Rembrandt, it was of national importance yes. to the heritage. Or even more than that. I mean, this, this puts a whole different historical slant on it. It moves from Albeit an important old master picture, maybe, to a national treasure. I mean, whatever the picture is, whatever we catalogue it as now, whoever painted this, this was in its day something of supreme importance. Mm. Well, obviously, in their day, they were pretty convinced it was by Rembrandt, otherwise, they wouldn't catalogue it as a national treasure. I assume. Yes. So, we really do need to find out who it's by. If we can find out who painted our picture, then we can also get closer to a fair valuation for its owners. So I come to Amsterdam, where Rembrandt lived from 1639 onwards. So while I'm here in Amsterdam, I'm here to see probably the greatest Rembrandt connoisseur of our times, Ernst van der Wettering. As chairman of the Rembrandt Research Project, he knows more about Rembrandt than anybody else alive. If he says your unknown 17th century canvases by Rembrandt, it could be worth 25 million pounds, let's say. If not, just a few thousand dollars. This man's got the power of a Roman emperor. So, here it is. Ernst has so much knowledge and experience, he may well be able to give an instant opinion. <laughs> the first response is that it is a 17th century painting, but uh, if the question is, is the painting made by Rembrandt, the answer is no, because it's not signed. It's as simple as that, is it? It's, it's very simple, yeah. but the technique is, is uh, similar very similar and judging from the technique it must have been uh, done in his studio and he must have seen it in this painting each studio had its own paint recipes i wouldn't say there there were buckets of paint where they all picked from paint from but in his Rembrandt school they used the same matter and the behavior of the matter was comparable uh, some some of it flows easily, other paint sort of drags over the surface and, and behaves in a, in a specific uh, way. So what I see here, you could also see it uh, on, a, on a Rembrandt. So, the painting is not by Rembrandt, but it's definitely connected to the great man. With the help of Ernst and the team he works with, we can still find out who painted